All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm really, really looking forward to today's conversation because this is one where I get to learn along with the listeners because I don't know too much about you yet. And I'm really excited to hear about what you do, this idea of where you came from and the work that you're doing with others for their own journey and their own development and the coaching that you do. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. And thank you for joining me, Gemma. I'm really excited. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah. So tell all of us a little bit about you, how you got here, what your journey kind of looked like, and why you're doing the work that you're doing now. How did, you, how did that come about? Well, I guess I'm originally from Scotland, as you can maybe hear my hmm. voice, um, and I'm living here in Queenstown, New Zealand, and since January 2019, yeah, I left the UK and just decided to travel deeper my kind of sense of self and further my own development, so I just changed everything about my life to do that. And it was a very eat, pray, love kind of scenario. <laughs> My friends joked about that many times, but it just really being able to change everything about my life and just start afresh was what really connected me to my, I guess, sense of purpose and re-channel my energy towards a direction that was going to allow me to be able to do exactly what I do best but also to actually reward myself in the process because my background has been in um, child development, social services and that kind of area and it was a very difficult and emotionally challenging role to be in mm. and I just felt really disconnected to that trajectory to my lifestyle I was working really long and hard shifts and I was just very disconnected to my life and where it was going so mm. I thought that that can't be a good thing <laughs> you know <laughs> and so I guess I could have made just one or two changes but I decided to just change everything and just go for that exploration and here I am so over the course of I guess the last 18 months I channeled everything into this online business and being able to live true to my values mm. in a way that also gives me back my life and motivates me and I can see it you know evolving and lasting a lot longer than I would have had I stayed in the career I was in and the lifestyle I was leading and yeah. And yeah, so this has been, making all those changes has been monumental to me mm. connecting to my passion and purpose. So. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious to know if there was like a single point or a single moment where you're like, enough is enough. Like this is the kind of straw that broke the camel's back and I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Was mm. there that moment or was it a buildup of moments? Um, I would say it was a very kind of gradual process. There was a series of those moments. And to be honest with you, I recognized them and I ignored them. And that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Um, I spent most of my 20s living my life exactly how other people expected me to live it mm -hmm. and how, I guess, society shaped me to want to live it. And um, and that's all fine and well in terms of like graduating from university, going for the grad job, progressing in your career, having that long term relationship, ticking all those boxes that people feel they need to tick. But it's fine if that's if you're coming from a place of abundance and that's lighting you up. But for me, it was coming from a place of lack and Mm. I guess thinking I have to have these things because if I don't have these things it means something about me and my character and my limiting beliefs and it just confirms all of that yeah and so that's kind of where I was living and 
from and over the course of my 20s it just became more and more apparent that that's what I was doing Mm. Um, and yeah I guess the turning point was when I burnt out in my career in social services and left my job for a while and just worked casually Mm. and I had very extreme anxiety and didn't know what direction to go in so I went down the therapy route. I wanted to stay away from the medication side of things. And although that was offered many times, I just thought Mm. there was something inside me that said, that's not your path. Don't go down that route. And so the therapy side of things made me actually retrain as a therapist. And that was the thing that gave me all the insights into you know where was your self-worth being downgraded who was helping confirm those beliefs in your life and yeah and it was that that I just couldn't ignore I couldn't ignore someone saying to me who I trusted as my therapist saying okay there's the source there's the source you know (laughs) Um, It was quite confronting, but nonetheless, that was the pivotal moment that gave me all the energy to be like, I need to make some serious changes. And one by one, they all came and yeah, Yeah. packed a bag and off I went. (laughs) Right? Amazing. So now you're doing this coaching work where you take on clients and work with them through very much what you went through basically like it's kind of like you're coaching previous versions of yourself right yeah so what does that look like is it is it moments of hearing in people everything that they're going through and seeing those reflections of what you went through and offering the tools and techniques that you've learned with schooling to get them to where they want to go like what are you noticing the most that comes up in this um well obviously as a transformation coach the idea is to help people transform their life from a Mm. place of um disconnection from a place of you know lack from a place of living your life for the expectations of other people to reconnecting with who you are as an individual and what you want from this one life so I guess for me my ideal client is as you just mentioned my 2017 self (laughs) yeah had done the inner work and was doing the inner work and who was actively interested in self-development but just was being blocked left right and center by those subtle limiting beliefs or sometimes they weren't so subtle actually yeah um and those limiting beliefs I knew what I wanted I just didn't know how to get there Mm -hmm. and and when I did try something I was often met by a piece of evidence that would confirm that limitation of no you're not actually that good enough or you don't what you're doing or you know you're an experience or something that came up it would just confirm that and then I would just feel disheartened and not bother Mm -hmm. and so when I changed from therapy to coaching that's when I really just had someone who was again who I sparked with who we connected with that's very important to me and someone who just had my back and who held me accountable and pointed out no what you just did was exactly what your limiting belief wants you to do, do the opposite. Yeah. You know, and that can be really hard and scary, but having that person just um, push me towards what they know I wanted, yeah. you know, it's made me get it today. Like my, I coach to become free to like, that was my buzzword was freedom. And now I do exactly what I used to do in terms of holding space for people to grow and develop. It was children back then and in social services, but now it's holding space for people to grow and develop and lead to that fulfilling life Mm. that they want to live. Yeah. Love that. I think that, does that answer your question? (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I just love it all. 
So do you find that people, when they come to you, are they aware of their limiting beliefs? And so when we say limiting beliefs, for those who maybe haven't heard that term before, what we're talking about mm -hmm. is the thoughts in our head that literally limit us. They tell us we can't do this thing. We're not good enough. We don't have enough education. Like it's imposter syndrome mixed with all of our self-doubt and all of the ways that we can't progress and move forward. So do you find that people are aware of their limiting beliefs and they say to you, okay, here's what's blocking me. I know all the blockages help me bust through them. Or do you find that people come to you and say, I don't even know what's happening. Let me start from scratch and literally just like help me through the whole process. So is it a little bit of both? Uh, it's right now it's equal weighted for me. So mm. I'm seeing in my clients that I've, I've got some people who are coming and they're saying, okay, this is my main limiting belief. I've tried this. I've tried that. It just keeps coming up. I keep somehow confirming it. And that, you know, we have to do some right deep diving work into the history of that and just completely reframe it to the max. Yeah. And then there's other people that come and, you know, they've got these big ideas and dreams and they just feel like they can't reach them and they don't know why. Mm -hmm. And and that's when we bring in the idea of, you know, negative thoughts or limiting beliefs or anything like that and uh, work back on their script to see where it was that it, or try to see where it was that it first originated and maybe that's not necessary anymore most mm -hmm. of the time it's you know it's when we paint it in that kind of picture the client then sees it's actually really not necessary to carry on with that thought I understand why it was necessary back then I honor it and actually I can see that it's it's not necessary within myself mm -hmm. anymore and you can actually just see the relief on people's faces when um because a lot of the time I'm doing it like you and I are talking just now on zoom and mm -hmm. and you can just see a difference in the color of their face or their expressions or the way they're holding themselves and yeah. it's yeah it's, like the whole weight has been lifted like, yeah like that moment of realization like oh I've just been getting in my own way and didn't need to. And now I have all this space to step forward. And that's, mm -hmm. it's this whole, it's like instantaneous transformation and there's nowhere to go but forward from that space. Mm -hmm. So that's incredible. So when, walk me through, so if I came to you and I was like, Gemma, I am lost. I'm experiencing these things. I know some of my limiting beliefs, but I just feel like there's blockages left, right, and center. What are the first three things that I could do? Like where, for anyone listening, like if, there's, if they're feeling stuck right now, what are three things that they could do to start moving forward? To put you on the spot. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so the first thing that's coming to mind if someone was completely stuck and I'm imagining myself potentially being stuck and like just going round and round in circles with my thoughts and and I guess from that perspective in that moment immediately I would be disconnecting so I would be leaving my phone leaving the internet leaving my laptop I wouldn't be you know going on this rampant search to find out what to do and I'd be getting out into nature in that immediate moment and as soon as you recognize and, it, step one, yeah. get out. Disconnect, get, get out. <laughs> yeah. Got it. And um and luckily in New Zealand this is getting out is you know abundant, left, right, and center. It's everywhere, trails, you know, um the water, water's mm -hmm. particular feeling in particular, just listening to the sound of it. Um, but yeah, just stepping out into nature is the first and foremost thing I would do and and disconnect to reconnect so reconnect to everything you can hear all your senses your what you can smell even if the noise is annoying like just hear it recognize it like mm. 
um, what can you smell, what can you see, like really tap in and ground yourself in that way. Take your shoes off, walk around in the dirt, you know, just ground. Mm -hmm. And then once you feel comfortable to do so, you can ask yourself some really deep questions of what do I need? Do you know, do I need, is the answer, do I need to hire someone? Is it, do I need to listen to a podcast of really insightful discussions? You know, <laughs> is it like, you know, name, your intuition will know that's the thing when we disconnect to reconnect our intuition becomes so enlightened and mm -hmm. I feel like the the world we live in at the moment although it's definitely getting better your intuition is suppressed you know we're not taught these things yeah and so when we do this we can get that gut feeling that response that tells us this is the the next step i need to take and just keep doing that and building that into your into your routine you know mm -hmm. maybe make a daily thing that you do to find out what's my next step yeah and so i think that is can create monumental shifts in someone's mindset just stepping out of their current reality and creating mm -hmm. a new one yeah, yeah, that's big. I think because not only is it the disconnecting from all the stimulation, but it's disconnecting from all of the comparison and all of the things that feed our limiting beliefs. Like you scroll mm -hmm. through Instagram and all you see is everyone's highlight reel and all of the things that you're not doing and all of the ways that you don't look and all of the things that make you unworthy or not good enough. And it's programmed in a way to do that. These systems are literally built against us. They're designed in a way to make us feel not good enough so that we keep buying into these systems to make ourselves feel better. So to perpetuate that and to keep that going is just, it's such a detriment to ourselves. So I think that disconnect is such a huge one. Like I've gotten to the point now where I won't turn my phone on until probably like 9 a.m., like when I'm ready to actually do life. Like I take my time. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah like I just, I'm not ready. Nope. I want to set my brain waves up so that I am in a mindful headspace and I'm connected and like I'll read and drink my little decaf coffee and enjoy my morning routine. And a friend even said the other day, she's like, oh, my messages don't seem to go through to you. And I'm like, oh no, that's because I, that's, I, <laughs> I choose that. <laughs> yeah, I choose that. I choose when I let you into my life because uh -huh. it like from probably 7 p.m. to 9 a.m. It's airplane mode. And it sometimes in my head, I'm like, what if an emergency happens and somebody needs to get a hold of me? But I'm like, no, you know what? Things can wait and life will still go on. And there's other people that are available and ready and I have to do that for my own mental health. I have to do that so that I can continue to show up for people. So that disconnection is a really important one because it disconnects from all the things that aren't serving us so that we can reconnect to that inner voice and to that space of knowing. Because you're right, like in today's day and age, it's so silenced. It's we're told not to listen to that and to like ignore that and do this path that we've laid out for you when really that path only supports the, the higher ups. And you're like, well, what am I really doing? What does this actually look like? So other than limiting beliefs, what would you say is the second biggest thing that people come to you for? Um, structure mm. is the next thing. Um, Interesting. Because, and one thing I will say is that the morning routine gets all the limelight. Um, there's tons of books about it. It's talked about a lot, morning practice, morning routine, however you, you want to phrase it. Um, and one thing that I do help my clients recognize because I get, there's some hostility that comes. Like, I just can't get up at 5 a.m. and do what I need to do. I just can't. I have to do this because, you know, like my morning routine, my affirmations and list all these things. And there's then this angst around their morning routine and the judgment that they 
people can put on themselves and I'm guilty of doing it at times is if you don't do that morning routine that you have committed to the judgment and the inner critic that just goes wild is really unnecessary mm. and it's it's so damaging so getting out of that loop is also very tricky but what I turn around and I end up saying to my clients is actually take the emphasis off the morning routine and put it on the evening routine because we don't talk enough about an evening practice about disconnecting at night from that phone <laughs> about you know managing your screen time and going within before you go to sleep mm -hmm. and maximizing that level of rejuvenation that you have when you sleep through having two hours at least before you've hit the pillow of just you your presence or the people you love or you know just minus the screen read a book like you know read a book. <laughs> do everything you need to do set set yourself up for the day ahead so mm -hmm. that you're not waking up in a struggle and also setting the intention whether you do verbally or in a journal or just within yourself if you're into meditation or whatever just saying to yourself my intention for the morning is to rise at this time and go through whatever i need to do for my mental health before i welcome other people in and even setting that intention before you sleep like i will get up at this time because i want to mm -hmm. not because I have to get up because I have to do my morning routine. Like there's a different energy around both of those. And it really makes a difference to A, actually going through with your morning routine and B, going through it with the right vibe and the yeah. inner coach support instead of like an inner critic judgment. Mm -hmm. It's just going to keep going throughout the day if you bring that in and first thing in the morning it's just going to set the tone yeah and I always say like in terms of what you mentioned about going leaving your phone off it's in the morning I always say like you you wouldn't wake up and invite 200 plus people yeah. into your bedroom exactly. first thing in the morning as soon as you open your eyes so why are you going on that phone to then let other people and your absorption of that set the tone for your day? Like mm -hmm. you need to take control of that and set your own tone before yeah. you can expect to make a difference, you know? Mm, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. that's the thing, like, hell no would I let that many people into my bedroom, especially no. in the morning. Like I want nothing to do with anyone. <laughs> like at all I'm still trying to like open my eyes you know and it's that slow moving space because we're still in those like alpha brain waves and we're still in that space of like low frequency but like positive frequency where we can just set the tone for the day exactly like you said and I think that's really important and that was the biggest change for me it wasn't having this really rigid this is everything that has to happen in the morning because I went down that track. Like when I did my yoga teacher training, it's all about 90 minutes of yoga in the morning and then an hour of meditation and then your neti pot and then this cleansing and that cleansing. And I was like, oh dear God, how am I going to do all of this? And it just adds this level of stress that no, that that's not what yoga is about. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So when I took a step back and said, okay, what's feasible for me? So I, I know that I am lucky in that I can make my own schedule with the work that I do. So I kind of have that flexibility and freedom to move things. I'm still very busy and have a lot to get done throughout the day, but I can say to myself, okay, you've got these hours and you can step into your day when you're ready. So for me, I can navigate it in that way, but I'm curious what I have two, I have a million questions, but I have two that I want to talk about first what about the people in a nine to five or maybe they're working even more hours than that how can they maybe find space in their day what does that look like for them and then i really want to know about your evening routine so whichever question you want to answer first i'm really curious okay. about what that looks like 
Um, so in terms of people who have like a busy schedule or nine to five, um, the things that they can do to bring in some peace, tranquility, fulfillment, silence is making use of that time during the day, during their shift um, or their working day that they have to themselves. And you're going to probably find this quite funny, but something I used to do because I literally would have extreme anxiety during my shift if I didn't, is I make really good use of going to the bathroom. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yeah. if you think about you know, you're going for a quick pee, but you're locking the door, well, hopefully, and <laughs> your time is just yours. So I would actually do some like deep breathing, box breath, where you um, breathe in for a, a set count, you hold for that set count, breathe out for that set count and hold again mm -hmm. for that set count. And you just keep going around that box breathing. I would do that while on the toilet, while washing my hands. Yeah. And I would be tapping into my heart space and asking myself, what do I need? And sometimes in such a busy shift as um, children's services, you forget to drink water. Like you forget, you don't yeah. get breaks. Like you don't, you don't have time for stuff like that. You're working in their home. So it's like, it's not a usual structured thing. So in terms of your job is trying to find those golden moments mm. where you can just quickly and briefly tap in and find out what you need and reconnect to what your body needs, what your mind needs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think and it's so powerful. Like it those is, yeah. moments are crucial because we mm. kind of forget about them. We're like, okay, nine to five, I'm working for someone else. And it's like, no, but you're still, you're still you. Like you still need to show up for you so you can still keep doing that job. So whether mm -hmm. it's washing your hands and having a mindful moment and feeling the soap on your skin and feeling the water and just connecting to that one thing, those yeah. moments of mindfulness and presence are profound on your brain chemistry. They're so, yeah. so important. So I really yeah. love that you brought that up. Yeah. And I think like, in terms of working nine to five, whether you do enjoy that nine to five job or whether you don't, I think both, it doesn't matter as long as you're making time for what does fulfill you before work or after work. Because I work with a lot of uh, people who have, who are satisfied in a nine to five and who mm -hmm. aren't, but the people who aren't seem to be exhausted by their working day, therefore they don't do anything after and then their work and something they don't like becomes their whole Monday to Friday and that is just not healthy and doesn't help you transform what it is you do want to then bring into your life and maybe change that job. So mm -hmm. finding something that you're going to look forward to every day, whether it's before you start work to top yourself up, or whether it's after work to wind down or both would be ideal, but I understand people lead very busy lives these days. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just finding that thing that lights you up so that your day doesn't become all that tone of not particularly enjoying your job or mm. you not know, a challenge in that sense. Um, but the other question on evening routine. Yes. So my evening routine is not complex. Like, um, you know, some people have so many factors and that I tried that way because I read mm -hmm. the Miracle Morning book by yeah. Hal Elrod, I think it was. Yeah, he's that one. Yeah. And I then took that kind of set structure and yeah. made that into my evening routine as well. And I just found it was too structured for the evening. And yeah didn't resonate with me and I disengaged from it for a while uh, beat myself up periodically you know right. and then yeah. I just kept it really simple and it's number one organize myself for the day ahead yeah. so I get clear I have a quick peek at my schedule remind myself roughly how the day goes um, and then organize if 
I need to pack a bag or whatever it is to get out the door, do that. Um, mm -hmm. But just get in the headspace of what tomorrow's going to bring. And then silence. So that can look like meditation or it can look like a quiet bike ride or walk, yeah. you know, just getting out in nature or just sometimes just sitting there. And I'm not necessarily using any meditation app. I'm just kind of like in my own presence. My mm -hmm. eyes are sometimes open, they're sometimes closed, but just having some silence to myself. Yeah. And then what else do I do? Intentions, that's the big one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's something my coach taught me to do because uh, I thought, really? <laughs> you know? Are you sure. <laughs> I have to set an intention, but um, just like we do in yoga practice, like deciding, my intention is always deciding how I want to feel when I wake up. Mm. Do I want to feel motivated? Do I want to, and it always works. You know, do I want to feel the gratitudes of my wins from this week so far? Do, you know, do I want to have, feel aware Mm. anything so I just set an intention of how I want to feel when I wake up and mm. that's like setting the tone for my day and it increases the likelihood that I go through with my morning practice which is always good <laughs> so. mm. yep exactly yeah because it is setting that tone yeah I really mm. like that and I really like there the are three things I don't necessarily do anything else no, I think that's, that's the beauty of it is that it's your time. Like yeah. that routine is taking time for you. And yeah. I really love that you bring up the fact that you look at what the next day has in store, because then you're creating that space mentally to say, mm -hmm. okay, these are the things that are being dealt with tomorrow. Is there anything that I need to maybe write down that I remember tomorrow so that it's out of my brain for tonight and just getting really clear yeah. in that space? Like that's really, that was a big game changer. Brain dumping is one of my favorite things to do. When I get, yeah. when I get like things are building up and I've got a lot on my plate, lots of juggling new things because yeah. this lifestyle I'm working online is the first time I've ever worked for myself. So that can be challenging <laughs> as well as really exciting. But brain dumping is, I'd literally just get a scrap bit of paper and I'd dump everything I'm saying to myself, yeah. you know, everything I'm concluding, the judgment, if it's there, whatever, and just ripping it up into shreds. I mean, it is a bit of a waste of paper, but um, it, it works in that moment to like turn my, turn my thinking around for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because it's, there's the action of getting it out of your body. There's the action of it mm. being up in here and being so busy and then saying, nope, <laughs> you need to be either on a piece of paper or type down or whatever works best for you and you need to be out. Yeah, I think that's really, really important. So how has it been launching a business, running a business virtually in the midst of all that we're currently experiencing? Because that's, how long had you been started before COVID happened? I started during COVID. Of so. course you did. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. Let's just add that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I had been in Australia last year for, so I did Thailand, Australia, and then I went to Bali before I managed to make it into New Zealand three weeks before lockdown, I think. Holy. So that was, and I'm on a two year visa. So that was really lucky or else I wouldn't have managed to do my visa at all. Mm. But anyway, um, I've lost my train of thought. What was the question? Wow, just <laughs> how hard it must have been to how hard it was, start yeah. that and the challenges yeah. that you're possibly facing. Because I think... Yeah. I think a lot of people have chosen to start a business or to change careers, whether it be because of a loss of job or because in their heart, they're like, now is, there's no better time than now with the chaos that we're experiencing. I might as well follow my heart and do the things that are best for me. So I think a lot of people will be in a similar situation 
than you, either through choice or through circumstance. So how have you, I'm kind of changing my question now, actually. How oh, you, go for it. <laughs> yeah, right? How have you managed to stick with routine and stick with your self-agency and stay kind of in your truth while maintaining your health and well-being in the midst of running a business during COVID? What does that look like? Um, actually, I feel like the business side of things kept me kept me in myself if that makes mm. sense it kept me focused it kept me inspired um the fact that i was striving to build up my client base the fact that i was motivated to help people the fact that i'm holding space for people which is something i've always done it's been the main theme throughout every job I've had I just yeah. didn't know how to do that and reward myself in return so the fact that what I was striving for was the most rewarding thing I've ever gone for in my life do you know it was mm. like it outweighed everything else as serious as as it's been and the worry because my family is all in the UK and New Zealand we're pretty good you know yeah <laughs> everything just kind of you know gone on as normal so to speak compared to everyone else mm -hmm. so that's been a huge worry and and I'm here on my own you know I do have family members in New Zealand but that that sense of being here on my own and building up new connections and friendships again, which is probably the hardest bit of traveling, mm -hmm. is um, feeling connected to other people because as you move around, you've got to start again and again yeah. and again. Um, so I think just the idea that I'm staying connected to my vision and yeah. I've got a one year vision, I've got a five year vision, I've got a 10 year vision. And, you know, dropping in and connecting to each stage and adding to each stage and reminding myself of why I was doing it I actually put this filter, it put like rose tinted glasses on and, um, and just got me through, got mm -hmm. me to settle from that worry and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, just yeah. got me thinking about what actually I feel part of COVID is here to tell us is to level up, level up our way of life, level up the, our way of thinking, the way we relate to this planet, you know, the way, the way we relate to humanity. Yeah. And the, I feel like I'm doing that finally through the work mm. that I'm doing is helping people challenge their thoughts, their mindset and strive for more in a world that suppresses that at times yeah you know yeah so that's just been that the main motivator yeah the yeah I really I really value that because I think that's exactly I think I have a very similar take on it I think there's so many lessons in COVID there's so many yeah. big awakenings to say like hey <laughs> none of these systems or structures were working Here's your chance to literally burn it to the ground and start over. So yeah. what are you going to do and how are you going to do it? And I think that's where I love having these conversations and being able to highlight that because I think the more we bring attention and awareness to the fact that things were not working, they weren't equitable, they did not thrive for equality, there was no... The, the disparity is just so huge between the haves and the haves nots and the marginalized and I could just go on for days about how our society was just really messed up and continues to be really messed up and the fact that you can recognize that for yourself and say I'm either going to stay in a system and structure that doesn't work or I'm going to step back and say I'm actually going to take back my individuality, but also my community and my collectiveness and be the best version of myself so that I can then empower the collective to do the same, which through your work is that ripple effect. Like by you living in that truth, 
then allows other people to say, oh, you can be successful without doing this thing that everyone else is trying to feed me and force me to do. Wait, there's another way to live this life. There's another way to do these things. So it is really valuable to hear that staying in that purpose and staying in that truth is what's led you to stay healthy and well and motivated and inspired in that way. Because I think now more than ever, we need people stepping into those spaces. Whether you start your own business or whether you just live into that in the current job that you have. But I think we're seeing more and more people say enough is enough and how how am I going to hold myself and society accountable? And how are we going to exactly that level up? So I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once you make that first mindset shift, that first reframe, it's like, it's like turning on a light and that light will then never go off because once you've made the first mindset shift, it just, you see, it ripples throughout your whole life in every circumstance and it can be quite, um, you know, striking at, at points where, and you don't always necessarily are ready or want to see that shift yet. Um, but nonetheless, it's there and you, you can or can't ignore it. And in my case, I did ignore things for a while and it just got worse and worse. The universe kept sending me messages until... <laughs> I'm still here. It just went boom and mm -hmm. everything changed for the better. And that re relief that came from that change was how I've managed to step into who I feel I am for the first time in my life, do you know? Mm -hmm. And I just want to kind of really help people, especially younger people as well. Um, I help anyone, but especially younger people, because if I had known this stuff, when I was younger, in my early 20s, when I felt so judged by society, by everyone around me, like, you know, it was just awful to be in that space. If I can help people in that moment, yeah, you know, realize the, the stuff, they can choose what resonates with them and leave what doesn't, and hopefully it can impact mm -hmm. that mindset. Yeah. Develop at a younger age. Um, so yeah mm, as soon as I love that, that shift, it keeps on shifting <laughs> yeah yep exactly yeah. and as uncomfortable as it can be sometimes it's always for the best so it's like yeah. keeping that in mind like my mantra mm -hmm. is always I trust that everything's unfolding exactly as it's meant to so even in the uncomfortable moments I'm like okay here we That's go a great mantra. yeah it's <laughs> been like my grounding force is like anytime I get rocked one way or the other I'm like okay yeah, let's just come back to that. Everything is unfolding exactly as it's meant to. And then I can kind of take it from there. Yeah. So I have one more question for you. And I'm really interested to see what you say for this one. Because there's, you can take it any direction. It doesn't have to have to do with anything that we've already talked about or that we've brought up. It can be anything that speaks to you. So when you think of our world as it is right now, think of society, globally, locally, whatever, is there one big change that you would want to see made or one big norm, like a societal norm that you would want to disrupt and why? Good question. It's my favorite. <laughs> uh, wow. Hmm. I think what speaks to me the most and is that you don't have to live your life through the expectations of other people and it's you know the theme of our discussion it's the theme of why I do the work that I do it's the theme of how I managed to get to where I am and make the change in my life that I mm. needed to make and I think if we can disrupt that from an early age yeah. and you know a lot of it's to do with the education system as well is if we can disrupt the idea that this is the expected and only accepted trajectory because I mean I don't know what the education system's like in New Zealand but 
I feel like in the UK in particular, judging from my experiences growing up, um, creativity, thinking outside the box, wasn't nourished at all. There was no nurture in terms of that. It was... Um, I mean, I remember going to the careers, uh, school careers guy and him, I put down a list of universities that I wanted to go to, all studying psychology. And he said to me that I was um, setting the bar too high. <laughs> no. And yes, and my sisters have had similar experiences in terms of having their spirits dampened. And it's like, if that's if that's how we're treating our young minds that are going to turn into adult minds and you know keep exactly. going then it's like we need to disrupt that All expectation that. and the only accepted way that you can grow up is by going to university mm -hmm. what if some kid has this super inspirational idea you do hear of them yeah and they end up their business online from their bedroom and they're like they create so much change in the world just yeah so if we can disrupt that expectation that you have to lead your life in a certain way and um and that stems into relationships as well that you have mm -hmm. to have that long-term relationship you have to progress it in a certain manner you know it's like disrupting the expectations of living your life by how society expects you to live by how other people expect you to live and that's no judgment judgment on educators or parents that's just they're coming from their capacity and yeah. you know yeah. and their molding and their conditioning so mm -hmm. if we can somehow disrupt that mindset I think we're on to something we're on to serious yeah. levels of innovation yeah. change within the world yeah I want to live in that world same let's go <laughs> yeah I'm with you let's do that instead yeah I think that's I remember so many moments in school hearing oh like are you sure shouldn't you actually like look at it in this way or shouldn't you go in that direction and well you're not really that kind of thinker and you're like, what does that even yeah. mean? And then it just, it's And like, who are you to talk. decide what kind of thinker I am? Exactly. I mean, I had great experiences at school, but, and I had some really great teachers, but there were a few monumental kind of moments in my education that definitely confirmed and probably created limiting beliefs that For I then sure. laid out in adulthood as if they were true. And lo and behold, toxicity and yeah. you know ill health came from all directions so yeah. and that's what we're trying to yeah, undo really, now and that's what yeah. we're trying to destructure and and it can be it. undone that's the thing yes yeah there is absolutely hope absolutely we're very changeable very very changeable mm, i love that so limiting the expectations removing those from the equation and just coming back to the space of self and what do I want and what do I need? And I love that. And I love that you're doing this work. I love that you took this time out to have this conversation. It's so greatly appreciated. So where can people find you? How do people connect with you? Um, so I'm on socials, Facebook and Instagram at Gemma with a G, Rose Peacock and that's where i offer a ton of valuable conscious content yeah. book reviews tools you name it <laughs> amazing amazing um, and the idea is to create like a platform that people can come together and learn from one another so that will be coming soon love it and events in queenstown that will be coming soon as well so and I will probably take those events online at some point. Um, so they'll be centered around mind shift, yeah. mindset shifts and changes. And yeah, in-person coaching in Queenstown is what I'm doing now. So now that our days are a lot sunnier, we're yes. heading into summer, 
So mm -hmm. I'll be hitting the trails doing one-to-one -one coaching. Um, Love it. Helps me get away from my laptop. And the power of coaching in nature is even more transformative. I've done it. It's like just amazing. So. Mm. How cool yeah, is that? Oh, I love that. I love that. So connecting the nature and the elements as well as that mindset shift. So beautiful. And I'll link everything in the show notes. So you'll see everything there as well of how to connect with you and how to. Oh, great. Thank inspired. you. Inspired. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got so, so much out of this conversation and I really appreciate your time. Likewise. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No, thanks for asking me on. It was um, great to see your little post. And I.